gorgeous people. Turn to someone and say, you're so pretty. <laughs> hey, a man can be pretty, okay, yeah. We're secure in our masculinity. <laughs> Before we pray, today's sermon, we're going to be spending three months on the subject of spiritual gifts and just praying over individuals. Today's sermon is going to be the sweetest and the most foundational. This is going to put the backdrop of everything else you ever study on, on praying over people and spiritual gifts. This is the whole heart of God. So let's pray first for today's sermon just to be the, the place of rest and foundation for everything else we do in praying over people. Father, in the name of Jesus... Let us understand why you would call us to that precious subject of laying hands on people, of physical touch, and all the spiritual and soul and significant and tender-hearted purposes of Jesus when we lay hands on one another. Open our eyes, open our hearts to know you and to let you shine through us. In Jesus' mighty name, all God's people said, Amen. We're doing a spiritual gift study of 1 Corinthians 12 through 14 prayer chair ministry. Basically, we have one vision, make time to pray. For us, that means two things. One is second service month, weekend of every month, we shorten everything and leave about 15 to 20 minutes of just quiet instrumental music so you can just have some quiet time in the presence of God. And the first weekend of every month, we have small group weekend where we also make sure there's plenty of time for the small groups to have time for prayer. But we emphasize that this is a vision, not rules. There's no rules. You don't have to do anything. It's just more just having a heart to pray. Now, today we're dealing with the question, why do we lay hands on people? And the Bible gives us four reasons biblically. The first one, which we're going to not pop up until I say so. The first one, thank you, is really important. The first one is... Um, is all about going against the culture of this world. And in each of these four, I'm going to have you write down a single word. But the first one, I'm going to say it together slowly, is, is to slow down time. And something very profound happens when you actually have someone that's hurting and you sit down in a chair and you lay hands on them. The brain calls it alpha waves. Most of us operate in beta waves. Beta waves are, are 12 plus hertz in the brain. It's hyper, hyper, busy, busy, busy. Alpha waves are about 8 hertz. And, and most people think of alpha, alpha waves like the beach or relaxing in front of a book in front of a fireplace or a mountain scene. But the ultimate picture of alpha waves, the ultimate moment in history human-wise, is if you've ever had the privilege, which most of us had, of holding a two-month-old baby who's asleep on your shoulder, and you just want, you want everything to pause. And that precious child is a sound asleep, and you're just letting every second just tick-tock, tick-tock, and just, oh, God, this is just, this is a moment in time I want to just freeze for eternity. And somehow that second, everything slows down. And the concept of, of touching the reason God didn't say extend your hands or point at them, but to actually touch them. And, and the touching part is very, very important. I've, I've taught once before. In fact, people tease me that when we first started soaking time uh, three, four years ago, I did a quick teaching in laying on hands, and I, and I taught the ways to not lay hands on people. And people still joke about that, and it's, it's, it's still valid to know. I, you know I've, been, I've been pastoring for 44 years, been a Christian for almost 50 years, and I've had plenty of times people laid hands on me. Most of the time, they're wonderful. But I'll never forget the one time I sat in a chair and this man that was just not very sensitive and he weighed over 300 pounds and he was tall. And, and first of all, you just don't put hands on a man's head unless you're like super ordaining them or something. He, he leans over, puts his hand on my head. He goes, oh, God, we pray for Brother John today. And like I'm thinking, oh, God, please don't break my neck. You know, it was just, it was painful. <laughs> And I've had a few people that thought I was their leaning post. You know, they're leaning on me like, and then, and then my, my most irritating, I have to say this, are those who are the thumb rubbers. <laughs> they just, they, they, they think that it's partial hands, partial massage. <laughs> and you're sitting here and they're just so loving. I just want to slap them. <laughs> Stop rubbing me, you know. <laughs> this is not a massage. <laughs> Hold your thumb still. <laughs> So those are the negative 
stories. But here's the thing. I, that's, that's a very small part. And most people are, you know, you just lay your hands gently on the arm or the shoulder, gently. I don't want you to be so afraid of the negative that you avoid the positive. Because if someone is in your small group or here at Soaking and they want you to lay hands on them, and two people are laying hands on them, and you step back because, well, the two people are laying hands on them, there is some, there's some, when you sit in a chair and you're in a hurting place and seven or eight people cover you, it, it is like a blanket of the Lord's love. You want, you want hands, you want, and, and those hands, when they touch you and the love of God comes through, so, so more people laying hands on you, just gently touching you, there's just such a blanket of love that covers it. And the nice part about this, this is, this is the first and, and really the most important thing. I want to show you two scientific studies and then show you what Jesus said about this. There's this, this power of touch by Andrew Reiner in the New York Times. says, the benefits of non-sexual touch read like a 19th century tonic advertisement, except that this is actually scientifically vetted. Touch has been found, among other things, to reduce stress, reduce heart rate, and reduce blood pressure. Touch has even been found to lower the levels of cortisol in the body, which improve our working memory and the immune system resilience. In another study, facts about touch, how human contacts affect your health and relationship in the year 2018. It says non-sexual touch causes your brain to release oxytocin, known as the bonding hormone. This stimulates the release of the other feel-good hormones such as dopamine and serotonin while reducing stress hormones such as, such as cortisol and what is that, lady, medical people? No, no, no. What my wife always tells me how to pronounce that. She's the nurse. Nor norepinephrine. Uh, these neurochemical changes make you feel happier and less stressed. Research suggests that being touched can also lower your heart rate and blood pressure, lessen depression and anxiety, boost your immune system, even relieve pain. Simply put, being touched boosts your mental and physical wellness. So your first, God's heart, first and foremost, is just to touch. But here's what Jesus said. Jesus said, Matthew 19, 13, 15, the little children were brought to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and pray for them. But the disciples rebuked them. You know why they rebuked them? These kids aren't sick. These kids aren't important. And these kids ain't doing nothing. You see, adults, we do things. Kids don't do things. Kids just be. They just be. Adults, we do. And the disciples say, look. Adults, we get this done, this done, this done. This one's contributing. That one's getting this job done. This one has this level of importance. They, they're not doing anything. They're just being. And Jesus said, I'm a lot more connected with the being group than I am with the doing group. <laughs> and so Jesus, watch this carefully, to let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to the beers, not the doers. He said, and when he placed his hands on them, and the word placed his hands literally means to envelop. So there's 15, 20 kids. He didn't just go along the line and touch them. I just don't like that, I'll be honest with you. He, it means he looked, took each one in his arms and held them, leaned his head over them. You, know, you can just see Peter standing behind him going, ooh, little time, you know. <laughs> We've got to get moved. We've got our itinerary here. And Jesus kind of turning away from Peter, just ignoring him, you know, and just holding each child, praying over him. Next child coming in, just no hurry, taking his time and holding him. And touching them. So the Bible, the Bible creates this antithesis to a crazy world that says, make time stop. So I want you to write down, next to slow down time, write down one single word. Write down the word connecting. There's a connecting that takes place that's that supernatural just when you touch. Now the second one is to release blessings. And I want you to write down the word imparting. Imparting. And you see the bank account thing there? If I had supernatural information, I could look into every detail of your financial records. I knew how much you owed on your house, all your debts. I knew all your assets, all your retirement, that kind of stuff. And I could accrue every ounce of information. I would know all your assets and all your li liabilities. First thing I would know is whether you have more assets than liabilities, whether you have more li but, you know, I'd know, okay, oh, you, you owe that much, and you only have this. Oh, that's kind of scary. You know, oh, you have this much assets and that much liabilities. That's much. Very good, good. More assets than liabilities, you know. And I would immediately know how much, how your finances are. Am I right? Hear me. In heaven... Every person is looked on from heaven, and every person has an assets and liabilities quotient. It's called blessings and curses. 
And from the time you are born, you're born, the Bible says that your parents carry blessings and curses, but then every word spoken over you, every action, every thought, every motive either adds to your assets or adds to your liabilities. So you have blessings and curses that accrue. You have a bank account. And so the second thing, when you lay hands on someone, first is just we, are, we, we care about you. We're not in a hurry. You are valuable. You're important. The second is this. I'm going to increase the bank account of blessings over you. And that is, a, that is a, listen, Isaiah 61 verse 9, their descendants will be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see John, David, and Jamie will know that they are a people the Lord has blessed. I prayed that over my kids every single night, the time they were born, until they were long gone from my house. Now, my daughter, she's one of these easy kids. You know, you have some kids that make you look better than you are. That was my daughter. She just, everything. Did. My son, however, he was just, he was just determined to, you know, if there's the doorway, well, let me try five windows first, you know. So, and he just, he really is a very smart, brilliant, really godly kid. He really never gave us much problems. But, he, but when it came to dating, I mean, he finished law school. He's brilliant. He finished law school at 22 years old. He finished law school at 22 years old. I mean, he finished college, finished high school at 15, finished you know, undergrad, he finished law school at 22, and he's, he's only 5'7", and he's short, and he, that's my wife's fault. <laughs> and he's, uh, and so, but he's super shy, really good looking. And so the girls he dates, they're like crazy. I mean, there's like some crazy girls out there, and they're like wacko crazy, wacko crazy, wacko crazy. So the whole time he's bringing home these girls in his 20s, and he didn't date that often. It's like every couple of years he dated another wacko crazy girl. And we're just like, oh, she's so nice. She's so nice. Please, God, please, God, please, God, please, God, please, please, the blessing of God. So he, I mean, and then they break up. Oh, thank you, God. And then we just kept saying the blessing of God, the blessing of God. So finally, when he's like 31 years old, this girl that he'd been working out with a Krav Maga partner for two years. She's gorgeous. She's super strong Christian, and she'd had she'd been attracted to him, but he thought she was out. Of, he, she was out of his league, and she chases him down. Chases him down. She kept she, he, she kept saying, "What's she doing this weekend?" He thought she was just being nice. <laughs> Finally, he said, "What's she doing this weekend?" He said, "Well, I got tick, you know I have season tickets to Atlanta United, but I just go with the bud, but I have no buds available." And she said, "Well, I've always wanted to see Atlanta United." I'm just like, <laughs> "Hello." <laughs> Well, okay, come with me. So they start dating. They dated for two years. They've been married for five years. I got a grandbaby. It's like, oh, and she's the most wonderful daughter in the whole world. It's the blessing of God. But that's, that's every day praying, blessing, blessing, blessing. Doesn't mean you don't go through some trials. But when you lay hands on people, you have the spiritual ability to increase the assets of blessing on their life. And that's a very serious thing. And you can feel it. If you are a spirit, listen to me. Laying on of hands is an experiential growth thing. I have been wrestling since 1972. I wrestled for about seven, eight years. I've coached for almost 50 years. I wrestled this past Wednesday. I love wrestling. I still learn things about wrestling every week. The same thing about laying on of hands. You can lay hands on a thousand people and you will have a thousand times more experience and strength and anointing. But in the next 10,000 times you lay hands on people, you'll be 10,000 times more. It just grows. It deepens because it's the heart of God. But your focus is, I'm here for you. And then the very next thing is, let the blessing of God increase in us. And here's what the scripture says about it. It says, after they sent out Paul, they sent out Paul and Silas, they fasted, prayed, and they placed their hands on them. Paul and Silas, you're going to start being missionaries. We're going to lose the blessing of God on your life. Acts 6, 6, we're going to have our first sets of deacons. They brought them before the apostles. And after praying, they laid their hands on them. We're going to have deacons. We're going to lose the blessing of God on your life. Genesis 48, 14, Israel stretched out his right hand and laid on the head of Ephraim, who's younger, and his left hand on Manasseh's head as he's blessing his sons. Numbers, watch this, this is a great one, 6, 22, 27. The Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron and his sons to bless the people of Israel with a special blessing. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show his favor and give you peace. And whenever Aaron and his sons bless the people of Israel in my name, what's next two words? I myself. I myself. God says, I wait for you. And when you bless, I bless. And lastly, even Jesus himself, when John the apostle fell at his feet as though dead, Jesus placed his right hands on him, blessed and says, don't be afraid, I'm the first and last. So our first thing is just, I, I, I'm, I'm with you. I touch you, I connect with you. The second one is I'm imparting to you. The third one is that we actually release the rivers of the Holy Spirit. 
We're not calling on the Holy Spirit out there. He's within us. And then when we, when we lay hands on people, now listen to me carefully. This is, this is, the differentiation here is important. Someone has a need. Their child is struggling in school or there's a sickness or there's a, a concern in a, in, a, in a situation. If no prophetic word comes, if no miraculous answer comes, if the situation does not change, the fact that I am with you is the most important thing. The second thing is just that we're increasing the blessing of God over all. And then the third thing is, let the presence of God be real to you. And whether, a, whether any gifts flow or not, nothing is more important than knowing that the presence of God, and that is such a real thing, and you, you are such an, an, an awareness. So in this one, I want you to write the word opening. Because if you see the, the, the PowerPoint, when you first start doing this, you'll sometimes just feel a trickle. But the more you lay hands on people... The longer you lay hands on people, you can literally feel your heart, or it's literally your spirit actually, opening up and more of the spirit pouring through. Now, I want to say a couple of things here that are going to refer to later on in the teaching, because we're going to teach on this for three months. We're going to take next month and basically teach verse by verse through 1 Corinthians 12 and 1 Corinthians 14. And in the month of June, I'm going to explain some about tongues. But the whole thing about time, I've been pastoring for 40, I guess 44 years now. And, and the hardest part for me about laying on hands at the altar ministry is that I just can't stand this whole thing of laying hands on people for 15 seconds. I just can't stand it because in my heart, when I lay hands on people, I mean, I want you to sit down and I want to lay hands on you for like 15 minutes. I really I just want to lay hands on you. I want to pray over you. I want to have my wife join. And I want to pray in the spirit. I want to quote. When we do, when we do soaking, um, we hand out these chapters these are, these are uh, 17 chapters of some of the greatest chapters to pray over people. I have 46 chapters that I quote every week. I love to memorize the word. And so when I'm praying over people, I will, I will just sit them in a chair, and I'll just pray in the Spirit, and I'll, then, and I'll quote a chapter of the word, then we'll just be quiet, then I'll just pray in the Spirit some more, and there might be a word I'll just pray. To, but I just, the soaking just increases and increases, and just time just stands still, and the love of God and the presence of God just increases. And because I have the word and the Spirit, and the whole subject of tongues Tongues is such a simple subject. And when you get to 1 Corinthians 14, he just says, tongues is your spirit praying when English is not enough. What is tongues? Your spirit praying when English is not enough. So some of you have not needed tongues, and that's why you don't pray in tongues. And that's okay. So you don't pray in tongues because you haven't needed it. But when you need tongues, and I know of many, I, I know of uh, four or five different instances of fathers. I have one friend who... Uh, his son was deathly sick, and he stayed in his hospital bed, and he prayed in tongues and read the word and prayed in tongues over his son from 10 o'clock at night to 5 o'clock in the morning. And his son had an illness that wasn't supposed to even survive. And he just sat there on his, uh, on his knees and just kept praying in the spirit, and he sat in a chair and just prayed in the spirit and read the word and prayed in the spirit read the word. And, uh, and, and, and when you're praying over your son who's on his deathbed, and you went out of words, and you just want, you're, you're yearning for the Spirit of God to move through you. It says in Romans 8, 26, there's groanings and utterings that words cannot express. And you're just wanting the Spirit to flow through you. Tongues flows real easily then. And that, this is a very dear friend of mine. At 5 o'clock in the morning, he, he wasn't, he just said, and he wasn't even like, you know, super demanding healing. He was just, God, this is my, this is my he's your son, Lord, whatever you want, but I, I'm asking you to heal him, you know, and just, and, and, and just, he was just waiting on the Lord and praying and speaking healing and blessing. Didn't he? He, he wasn't. He wasn't. I don't know how to say this. He wasn't one of these cocky, arrogant Christians. If you, you hear me, he just was. God, I'm trusting you. I'm trusting you. I'm trusting you. And at five o'clock in the morning, the Lord spoke to him and said, "I have healed your son." And his son woke up at that moment, and every the fever which was 105 was completely normal. Every ounce of sickness was gone. They released him a day and a half later because they could find nothing wrong. But it, all night long, he'd been, I mean, everything just boom. But, it, but for 10 o'clock at night, just, just, and I, you, you can't know the value of tongues till you have, have yearned to pray for someone. And you just want the Spirit of God to flow through you so much. 
And every parent should know this because when you're laying down to bed at night, you just want God bless this child. And you, you want the spirit of God to pour through you. It, it's not about the gifts. It's just that let them know the presence of God. Here's what the scriptures say on this. It says, now Joshua, son of them, was filled with the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on them. Now, let me ask you a question. Before you, I said this, would you in your American microwave culture assume, you know what assuming does? Listen, I, listen, I wasn't raised Christian. You can still break that, you can break that word down, from if you, and I'm just fine with it. You don't even know what I'm talking about, do you? Some of y'all are so holy. <laughs> the person next to you will explain it to you. That's what assuming does. Well, you all assumed that Moses laid his hands on Joshua in it for 15 seconds, didn't you? How do you know Moses didn't lay his hands on Joshua for two hours? How do you know that? You know, their culture, they weren't in a hurry. So Moses laid his hands on Joshua, maybe for the whole day. Peter and John placed their hands on them again, maybe for 10, 15, 20 minutes. And they received the Holy Spirit. Ananias went to the house, placing his hands on Saul. Again, doesn't say for 10 seconds. Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were come here, has sent me here so you may see again and be filled with the Spirit. Peter and John, they received the Holy Spirit. When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them. It's a soaking that they may know the Holy Spirit. And then the last one is to receive the gift of the gifts of the Spirit. Write down the word listening. Because you see, the gifts of the Spirit is not something you really have to seek. When you, when you, when you, and, and listen. I'm so proud of our small groups as a church to sit there and say, we administrate that the first week in every month, we don't meet as a group in, in main service. We don't because community is that important. So we meet, we have 29 small group rooms and, and, and you meet in this small group room and you get the worship and the sermon in 30, 35 minutes and you have an hour then and, and you have sharing of your, your, what happened last month and, and, and the best part and worst part of last month. But, but even then, everybody has a great attitude about the fact that we kind of ask you to keep your sharing to two minutes each so that everybody's sharing in 30 minutes and there's still plenty of time. That way, those who are hurting, we have time. We have time that we're not in the hurry. Then when you lay hands on people and you gather around, there's that connection that we love you, we're here for you. And, and not only that connection, but oh God, that, that we're here for you and, and, and we're blessing you. The blessing of God's increasing and the spirit of God's flowing on you. Then in all that, there's just such a listing that comes. Then prophetic words come. Then healing comes. Then miracles come. Then word of wisdom and word of knowledge comes. See, the gifts of the Spirit are much like crossword puzzles. Anybody like, cross, like, like, like I'm not, not crossword puzzles, but, but, but jigsaw puzzles. Anybody like jigsaw puzzles? Well, i got to be honest with you. I don't like 5,000-piece jigsaw puzzles. I don't even like 1,000-piece jigsaw puzzles. But I have grandkids. We do 50-piece jigsaw puzzles. That's my kind of jigsaw puzzles. It's like big old... <laughs> My, me and my three-year-old daughter do these 50-piece jigs. I like them. It's like you can do them in about half an hour, you know. I'm, obviously, I'm not that sharp. It takes me half an hour to do it. <laughs> but I'm doing it with my three-year-old, okay? So we take our time. But that's what the gifts of the Spirit are. It's like here's a prophetic word. Here's an insight. Here's another prophetic word. And, and the Lord brings, it brings the family together. He creates a picture of hope in the heart of this person. And so the scriptures say this. Paul said to Timothy, don't neglect the spiritual gift which is in you through prophetic utterance when laying on his hand was on you. For this reason, I remind you to kindle afresh the gifts of God which is in you through the laying on of hands. But then for the next two weeks, here's where we're going. Follow the way of love and eagerly desire the gifts of the Spirit, especially prophecy. 1 Corinthians 14 says, of all the gifts, the one that builds people up is prophecy. Then he ends 1 Corinthians 14 by saying, therefore, my brother, be eager to prophesy. Start off with that. So here's God's priorities. We lay hands on people because we want to slow down time. We want to release blessings. We want to release the rivers of the Spirit. We want to release the gifts of the Spirit. And it's something that grows every thousand times you do it. The deeper you go, the richer you go. So as our, as our altar ministers come forward, altar ministers come forward, we're going to go into a time of soaking. As my beautiful wife said, let me grab this back here. We're going to have prophetic ministry over here, healing ministry in the center. People want to be filled with the Spirit over on this side. But during a soaking time, we just encourage people just to, if you want to just stay in your seat, we just have quiet instrumental music. But it's also a time just for sometimes to pray over your kids, to pray over your mate. It's also a time to share with a friend. It is a time, these, these scriptures are up here. Sometimes when you're praying a blessing, 
I, I, like, I run out of even English and tongues, and I just want to read. I, I, sometimes I'll just, you just read Psalm 91 over them or read Psalm 103 over them. This is the time when we just loose you to say, hey, you got 15, 20 minutes. Just take your time, whether you want to stay here for five minutes or 20 minutes. But will you close your eyes right now? We're going to welcome the Holy Spirit. Will you repeat these words after me? Say, Lord Jesus, if there is someone here who needs my love, your love through me, let me be a vessel of your spirit. Open me up to pour through me your love in Jesus' name. And we invite you, Holy Spirit. Give us time. Give us rest. Give us your anointing. Give us, give us eternity here in this place. In Jesus' mighty name, all God's people said, amen. Let's minister one to another. Those who want ministry at the front, just come forward to the front. We'll minister to you up here.